Hello and welcome. In this video, I will be talking about and explaining the process of muscle excitation contraction coupling. To start things off, what is excitation contraction coupling? ECC is a sequence of events that converts action potentials in a muscle fiber to a contraction. This action potential is an electrical impulse that sets off a chain of events that ultimately ends in the contraction of a skeletal muscle. Now remember, each skeletal muscle fiber is actually a single muscle cell. These muscle fibers are also known as a myofiber or a myocyte. These giant cells have many nuclei and their cytoplasm is packed with myofibrils. These myofibrils are bundles of protein filaments, either actin or myosin, that cause contraction. Now we will take a look at how these myofibrils are stimulated to cause a contraction in a muscle fiber. Okay, let's begin. In order for a muscle to contract, there has to be an action potential that set things off. An action potential is created in the following way. An action potential arrives and depolarizes the synaptic terminal. This causes extracellular calcium ions to enter the synaptic terminal via voltage-gated calcium channels. This triggers the exocytosis of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine crosses the synaptic cleft and attaches to ligand-gated ion channels located on the motor end plate. In this case, the ligand-gated ion channel would be the ACH receptor. Once the ACH binds to the ACH receptor, the ligand-gated channel openings allow sodium to enter the cell. This forms an end plate potential and depolarizes the postsynaptic membrane, releasing an action potential. Now remember, at resting potential, the outside of the cell is at negative 70 millivolts. When sodium ions diffuse into the cell, it brings it down to threshold at around negative 50 millivolts. When threshold is reached, an action potential is released. The excess acetylcholine receptors bind to the enzyme acetylcholine X-rays, which then removes the acetylcholine receptors. The action potential that was created then travels through the sarcolemma, which is the cell membrane of the muscle cell, and along the T-tubule. At the end of the T-tubule, there is a dihydrine pyridine receptor that controls the opening of a riodine receptor located on the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The job of the riodine receptor is to release calcium ions from the SR. Once the calcium ions are released, they make their way down the sarcomere. A sarcomere is the smallest functional unit of muscle fiber. Interactions between thick and thin filaments of sarcomeres are responsible for muscle contraction. These calcium ions, once entered into the sarcomere, bind to troponin. Troponin then rotates tropomyosin away from the active site on actin. Previously, tropomyosin was blocking the active site on actin, and it is not until the calcium binds to troponin that troponin moves tropomyosin to expose the active site. Once the active site is exposed, the myosin head binds to the active site, forming a cross bridge. Now remember, actin is the thin filament of the sarcomere, whereas myosin is the thick filament of the sarcomere. An important note to write down is the formation of the cross bridge. The cross bridge is formed when the myosin head binds to the active site on actin. Once the cross bridge formation occurs, the contraction cycle begins. The contraction cycle is a series of molecular events that enable muscle contraction. Here we are taking a closer look inside of a sarcomere, with the purple filament being the myosin and the red circular filaments being actin. The green strand is the tropomyosin and the troponin is the orange dot being drawn. Once the calcium ion binds to troponin, the tropomyosin is rotated, revealing the active sites. The energy that was stored in the resting state is released as the myosin head bends, producing a force and sliding the active filament past the myosin filament. This process is called the power stroke. During the power stroke, myosin releases ADP and phosphate. The bond between actin and myosin head is broken when ATP binds to the myosin head. The ATP is broken down to ADP and phosphate, releasing energy, which is stored in the myosin head and will be used later for movement. If calcium ions are still present, the entire sequence is repeated.